All right. Welcome, everybody. Clearwater Jazz Holidays Young Lions Jazz Master Virtual Sessions. In for another great one, a conversation with series continues this week with Jeremy Carter with the one and only Jeff Vidal. And we are so excited to have Jeff with us. Um, you can see Jeff right here up, up on the screen, and we're going to see Jeremy in just a second. Um, thank you so much, uh, Jeff and Jeremy, for being part of this and everybody for participating today and who's watching and listening in the future. Participants are muted for the courtesy of the session, and we do record these after these live sessions. These, the video gets put in the studio on our education and outreach page where all of these live sessions get archived. And that studio resource is accessible at clearwaterjazz.com in the education and outreach section brought to you by Blue Water Wealth Management at Steward Partners and our friends at Duke Energy. And if you rather listen than watch, you can check out our Young Lions Jazz Master Virtual Sessions podcast which is brought to you by our friends at Marine Max Clearwater. Just hit over 3,000 total plays in just a few months and is just involving all kinds of wonderful educators and musicians. So thanks for being part of this, everybody. Jeremy Carter is one of the most sought-after saxophonists around. He is just crushing it down here in the Tampa Bay area. We love having Jeremy involved with these sessions, but he's got a big heart for jazz holiday education and outreach, participating in our History of Jazz Education Outreach Program, our My Journey with Jazz program, which brings a really unique experience to neighborhood family centers and more economically challenged pockets of our community. And of course, these Young Lions Jazz Master Sessions. Jeremy has traveled the world recording and sharing the stage with some of today's top acts. Several sold out shows and appearances to his credit, including a recent play with the Clearwater Jazz Holidays Wonderlust music series, which is a sort of reimagined open air, socially distanced music series we've been doing very creatively in the latter part of this year. And Jeremy just Jeremy and Jeremy Carter's rubber band just had an amazing night with us recently. It was it was it was really one for the books, and um, everyone just felt amazing leaving that experience. And um, we're just so happy. If you want to check out other stuff that Jeremy's done with us, go to the studio. He's got a really good beginner, intermediate, and advanced tenor sax series there. And you'll see uh, there's, there's, a, there's a session now on virtually every instrument um, in the studio and also some great general topics. Um, we have a conversation with series. Jeremy's been doing um, several really great ones um, this week with Sam Dillon and Joel Fromm and now Jeff. And um, we just couldn't be happier to have than to have Jeff um, take the time to be with us today. Jazz saxophonist, composer, educator, sergeant, first class in West Point band. I mean, we can't wait to learn about your experiences, Jeff. And I'm going to turn it over now to you and Jeremy. And um, the stage is all yours. Steve, thanks so much, man. What an introduction. I don't, I don't know what to do right. now. <laughs> Jeez, really. Jeff, thanks so much once again for being here with us, man. Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like I said, man, I've been keeping these things pretty loose. I figure um, we, could, uh, we could start the session off by, you know, just having you share uh, a little bit about yourself, like where you grew up and, you know, where what got you into music and sure. uh, some of your influences along the way and, you know, kind of how how you got to where you are. It's like a kind of a unique path. So for <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all the, all the, yeah, for all the musicians out there and young sax players or maybe not even sax players, um, there there's some there's some alternatives for you if you want to, you know, have a life in music. Um, so yeah, definitely just, uh, go ahead and take it away. Sure. Sure. Um, well, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of this series. Um, it's, uh, it's great to be here. Um, so, uh, I'll try to go quick. Uh, so I grew up in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, on uh, a town called Falmouth. Um, 
I started playing saxophone in fourth grade, which is about as, as, as soon as you can pick up an instrument there. Um, my grandfather on my mother's side played saxophone. This is actually his saxophone. No way. Uh, <laughs> um, we so gotta, my, we got to dig into that story a little sure, bit. Sure, sure, sure. So yeah. my, my mom, you know, my mom kind of told me you're going to play saxophone like grandpa. I was like, all right, well, you know, whatever. Um, you know, I'm in fourth grade, whatever, I can't remember. But um, when I was in fifth grade, uh, my band director started giving me private lessons. Um, and they were, I think, pretty unorthodox as far as what a fifth grader would be doing. Um, she had me order all the Joe Viola, uh, Berkeley School of Music, you know, the chord studies, scale wow. studies, rhythm studies. Uh, uh, among, you know, several other, you know, pretty, pretty heavy books. Um, and she would just like, I, I, she would like randomly just open pages and I, I have them still in the, in the, in the, the library there. And she just write a date, It'd be like two seventeen, and she circle it. And I wasn't practicing, but for, for whatever reason, I could read that stuff wow. at such a, at such a young age. So I would, we would read through it in the lesson. I would come back to the next lesson and essentially just sight read it again for her. And then we'd move on. Um, uh, we had jazz band there. So that's, uh, I, I was fortunate enough that there was a, there was a jazz band um, at fifth and sixth grade level and then seventh and eighth grade level. Um, I moved to tenor and sixth grade from Alto. Um, was, uh, you know, the big fish in a little pond was the, you know, the, 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 the typical uh, middle school going into high school tenor player guy. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> you, it's, uh, you, you know, it's, it's uh, pretty classic. Um, uh, I was also really good at sports. I was also really good at sports my whole life. Um, I, I was very athletic. Um, and so I had both kind of going on side by side. And then when I was a sophomore in high school, um, I tore my ACL playing soccer, um, which kind of sidelined that road that I was on. Um, uh, right before then, I had there, there, there was a jam session happening at a restaurant on Sunday afternoons run by this really incredible, but very uh, esoteric uh, pianist, uh, local pianist. Um, but that was really my, I started studying again, again with a band leader um, that, that had a big band. Um, and he said, you know, you gotta go to this jam session. So I would go, at, you know, every now and then, whenever I could, didn't really know what I was doing, had a real book, we would just show up and we'd play tunes. Um, and then I remember one day it was new, it was new, like the day before New Year's Eve and Roger, the band leader comes in and he's like, Hey, what are you doing tomorrow night? I'm like, uh, nothing. <laughs> and it's like, good. I need you to play second tenor with my big band here, you know, with our New Year's gig. And that was my first gig. I was like 15 years old. Uh, he's like, all right, uh, what do I do? Just show up here in a tux. I'm like, tux. I'm What's like, that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. So, so a uh, 15 year old GV shows up in black pants, a navy blue sport coat, and he had a, he had a clip on tie, clip on bow tie for me. Um, but you know, it got me through the gig and at the end, at the end of the night, I got handed a 50, like a check for 50 bucks. I couldn't believe it. I, you know, I, I remember being saying like, wow, this is cool. Like this is like, and um, I was very fortunate enough that my hometown had this big band called Stage Door Canteen. The band leader's uh, name is Roger Gamash, an incredible alto saxophonist. Um, and we had a weekly gig uh, at that same restaurant that I started playing in, playing in the, you know, the second tenor, the fourth tenor book. Um, I got to, I got to, I got like such a great um experience and and schooling in how to play jazz tenor in a big band setting right you're not stretching for chorus after chorus after chorus you got to say what you have to say in like 8 12 maybe 16 bars maybe a chorus right. um and 
So he would bring in some of the area's like greatest players. I mean, I, I, you know, guys were coming for Boston. I got to play with Bill Pierce, Andy McGee, um, Dino Gavoni, uh, some of the Rhode Island guy. Dennis Cook is an amazing player. Um, there was this cat from Providence, Mitch Fortier, um, who I ended up studying with after Roger said, "Look, I can't, I can't do anything more with you. You should go find." So he. He sent me over to Mitch. I learned a lot from Mitch when I was still in high school um, and the band was working a lot. So I, I was just, I was going and I, I was, I was just working, man. I, you know, I was playing all these, you know, playing weddings, all these, these club dates um, with guys, you know, three, four times my age and, and, you know, learning, making silly mistakes, but learning from those silly mistakes. Um, and like I said, when I hurt my knee, um, it, it became apparent to me that, well, soccer probably wasn't going to happen for me. And the only thing I had when I was laid up in, in that huge cast, I had my horn. Right. Um, so I started, I started putting more time on the horn. I never really did. I never practiced, man. I, it's one of, it's one of, it's one of my major regret, major regrets. Um, but you know, had, had I practiced, I probably wouldn't be where I am and I'm happy where I am. Right. Um, uh, then, you know, I graduate high school, it's time to go to college. Uh, I only applied to one school. It was Uni University of Massachusetts at Amherst, um, just based on suggestions from mentors that I had, people in my life. Um, Lynn Clock was the saxophone professor there. Um, so I was a member of his studio. I was accepted into the jazz studio with Jeff Holmes. Um, and I was really lucky my freshman year, um, the incredible New York City tenor saxophone is Adam Kolker just started teaching at UMass my freshman year. Um, so I had private lessons with Adam Kolker. Um, I would see Youssef Latif walking around the halls. That, that was his last year. Um, but I had a handful of interactions with him that completely changed my life. Um, uh, got, you know, got to do the, the, the jazz thing at school, amazing guest artists. Um, again, um, I wasn't really dealing with a lot of stuff. I, I, I wasn't really dealing with school. I wasn't really dealing with a lot of this stuff. Um, and really, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But also I was working like, I, yeah. I, like th there was enough of a scene where I could be playing two, three nights a week. And I remember, I remember, you know, getting like really ignorant and thinking like, oh man, I'm, I'm in school for a performance degree, but I'm performing all the time. You know, I didn't know anything. Right. Um, and it, it reached a point where, all right, I probably should stop going to school for a minute because I'm wasting a lot of money. Right. Uh, you know, student loans were very high for a degree that I still didn't have. Um, so I said, all right, I'm going to take a time out. And at that time, I was like, well, let me see, I don't know, let me see where I'm at. So um, I, I threw my hat out to a few things. I got accepted into an improvisation workshop um, in Brooklyn, where, where I used to live, trying to, trying to rip my, uh, my, my, you know, my, my old roots there. Um, yeah, the School for Improvised Music, it's incredible, uh, with Ralph Alessi, trumpet player. Ravi Coltrane was on the staff. I got a couple really great lessons with Ravi. Um, I also, that same time period, I got, I got accepted to Betty Carter's Jazz Ahead. And I did that two weeks down at the Kennedy Center, and that was incredible. Um, and, you know, the, the guys that I was there, that, that we were there together, they're all, they're all killing it. They're all, they're like all on the scene. They're all killing it. Um, I couldn't really find my way. Uh, around that time, I got hooked up with a band from New Orleans. Uh, a band like a funk band that toured all over the place. Uh, so I, I did a I did a couple tours with them. Uh, I liked the road life. The road life was pretty fun. Uh, I really like New Orleans. Uh, so then I just kind of picked up. I my, grabbed a suitcase full of clothes, my horns, and I moved to New Orleans, wow. uh, which was an incredible experience. Um, we toured. We were on the road close to a hundred nights a year. We toured a lot. Um, uh, and uh, which was also a really, really great experience, just playing all the time. I mean, playing funk, 
but I had, you know, it was a jazz gig to me just because it, it was just all open blowing. Right. Um, and that led to me getting, uh, experimenting with uh, guitar pedals. I had a huge pedal board. I was messing around with, with that whole, that whole scene. Um, and um, then Hurricane Katrina happens. Uh, we were on tour during that time. We didn't know what was going on. You know, they kept showing the same, the, the same TV shot every time. It was like, is that your house? Is that my house? I, you, you can't tell. They all kind of look the same. We were all, we were all screwed. We were all screwed. Um, there was like 12 feet of water in my neighborhood. I lived with a drummer. Um, so we were, you know, pretty, uh, pretty out of luck. Um, but, uh, and then I moved back to the Cape right after that. Cause I couldn't go to New Orleans. I remember on the bus ride back, I was just calling everybody I knew. Hey, yo, look, I don't know how long I'm going to be back in town, but I'm going to be here for a minute. Like if you need a tenor player, you know, yada, 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 I bought a car with my FEMA check, started, started gigging around again. Um, but then I had an opportunity to, to move to New York City for little to, for a couple hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Um, and so I took it. And uh, yeah, so that was about 2005 was when I, was when I moved to New York City. Um, and I was in New York for about eight, nine years. Um, Joel, who you, you spoke with yesterday, I mean, Joel was the first guy that really got the fire going for me. You know, I went out to one of those jam sessions. It was my first jam session. You're looking through the paper, which one am I gonna go? And you see no cover. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to this one. Perfect. Didn't read the fine print. Of course, that's like no cover means three drinks, New York <laughs> City drinks. <Yeah. laughs> um, but it was at Smoke. So I went and I did the thing and you know, I buy in my drinks and I'm listening to the guys. And then I remember hearing, put Joel in, put Fromm in. I said, no way, Joel's here? Like, I didn't know, I, you know, I, I, I knew nothing about New York. Um, and then, you know, of course, Joel was Joel. Uh, I remember he, he just destroyed Green Dolphin Street um, for, you know, and just like, you know, he just, but, you know, the, the legend of Joel Fromm was, 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 was great because he, he had come to, um, Amherst, if, you know, while I was in college with Dave Berkman, piano player and, and part of his group. Um, and I, 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 I talked to him and Joel was like, hey, I introduced myself and he's like, you got to, I play every Tuesday night at the bar next door. Yeah, so man. You, bet, you, you better believe I was there almost every Tuesday night I could be. Yeah. I went to, I went to the school of Joel for many, many, many Tuesdays. Um, and you know, got a great opportunity to sub with a with a with a small big band, the Fat Cat Big Band that played down in the village. Yeah, with Jade, he was good. Yeah, Jade's my dude. So like, I would go to Jade's jam session, you know, and hanging out at, on the set breaks and everything, because that's you know that's that's how you hang. That's that, that's how you get in. And I remember I remember hanging with Jade and being like, Yo, man, like if you ever need, or he's like, Yeah, you got to come hear my big band. So I come and hear his big band. And then I'm like, hey, man, if you ever need a sub, you ever need, it's like, oh, man, but my, I don't know if you can read my music, man. My music, my, my, my music is so hard. And so this, I'm like, dude, I can, I can read, bro. Like I played lead alto for five years and like a, you know, we're, you know, one of the best jazz ensembles in, in the country. I can do this. So he, st he let me start subbing in the band. But the, the best part about that was until that moment, I had never in my life gotten my butt kicked by trombone players and trumpet players. All of a sudden I'm surrounded by these instruments that are just carving up the changes. Like I'd never heard before. Yeah. And I'm saying to myself, like, I got some work to do, man. I've got some serious, serious work to do. Um, so that was just uh, an incredible opportunity. I, I then became a member of Jade's band. I, I was in there for, five six five six years me and stacy diller were the tenor players stacy's my dude um you know like and that you know every week every week for years um uh, you know and then i i got to bring my band there um you know that kind of got me got me in with spike 
and Mitch over at Smalls. So like New York, New York was, was New York was, I was, I was trying it. I was going for it. You know, like I, I didn't have anything else to do. Um, I was good at the saxophone. I wasn't great. Um, but I had found myself in, on a, on a pretty good, pretty good track. Um, better gigs started coming in. The network was starting to grow. Um, but you know, I, I remember, I remember it just, it, 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 it reached a point where I had the realization that my time, my time was more valuable than, than, than how I was treating it. Um, meaning that I spent so much like at the height of where I was, you know, you get up in the morning, I, I was living in Brooklyn, me and my, me and my then girlfriend, I, I think at the time, yeah, we, we were living together, living together in Park Slope. She was an accountant working downtown. So she'd get up early in the morning. I'd, I'd get up, I'd have, you know, sessions at the union, 10 a.m. So I'd get out, get on the train, do a, do a, you know, do a rehearsal for free because that's what you have to do. You have to do all these free sessions and rehearsals. Then maybe it's out to Queens for a session at some guy's place back to my place to work on some ridiculously hard music that I got to play, you know, at some random place for a big band for $15 if you're lucky. Yeah. Um, and then maybe if, if I had anything left, I'd go to smalls and hang. And that was it like day after day after day, but that was the life, right? That's, that's, that's New York. That that's, and like, if, if, if you stop going to all those free things or, you know, like that, your network just dies, you get, you get cut off, guys stop calling you. But I remember like, you know, I, I'd have like, I'd have all my horns light out, flute, clarinet, alto, tenor, everything just because I'm playing all these, these hard doubles, man, guys are writing crazy stuff, but all that stuff got me, got me work, right? Like all, all the doubles, like, oh, you, you can play clarinet. I have a clarinet. Oh, great. Be, be here. And then all, all of a sudden, you know, like that just led to, you know, so, so many great opportunities. But I remember, I distinctly remember um, that, that, that realization about, about, about my time and, and how valuable it is. And like, maybe there's, there's more, and, and I realized like I'm spending all this time in other people's music. So whenever I would get my own gig, I, I barely recognize my music. Right. Maybe there'd be a rehearsal. Maybe, and maybe the guys on the gig, or maybe the, you're lucky if the guys on the gig were the same guys on your rehearsal, because that's just not how New York is, man. You know, you can, you know, you call guys for the gig. Yeah, I'm cool for the gig. Oh, man, so I can't go to this rehearsal. I got blah, blah, you know, Joe Schmo coming into subs. Like, all right. For a while, for a while it bugged me, but then I, you know, then I just, that, that's whatever. All these guys are incredible. Right. So you're going to have fun. But ultimately at the end of the day, um, I wasn't really bringing anything to the table as far as my relationship, right? With, right. with my wife, we wanted, you know, we wanted to get married. We want to have children. Um, you know, I just, I just wanted to contribute and she was incredibly supportive of me. Um, and, um, and it was right around that point where uh, a guy I went to college with, who was in the West Point band, the Jazz Knights. Um, he re he reached out to me a couple times over the years. Hey, we got an opening. I'd be like, man, you crazy man. I'm not joining the army. I love the civilian life, you know. Like I'm not I'm not joining the army, you know. Blah 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 blah. Then he then he then he got me with this this new headspace, and I was I remember being like, all right, man. So I got I got got a notepad out. I'm like, all right, just lay it on me. <laughs> 45 minutes later, I had this list of pros about this long and a list of cons about that long. Yeah. And the only real con was I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, well, there were, there were two big cons. The first would be no more New York, um, which, which, which was a big loss. And it was something that I, I, you know, kind of, kind of mourned a little bit, you know, I, 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 there's just, there's just, you know, New York, there's no other place like it on the planet. And, you know, you're, you're just, you're, when you're in it, you're, you're, you're playing, you're playing just supremely creative music with supremely creative players every single day. Right. Right. And it just, it, it, it just, it pushes you and brings you to levels that you, you never thought you could get to. 
Um, and then the other column was just, oh man, three months away from my horn. Oh, what's that going to be like? So, but then I'm like looking at, at all the con, at all the pros, and I say, you know what? Let's go. Uh, let's go because the other the other alternative I had was going back to for more school. Right. So, so I, I was I was finishing my degree at that time too. I finally right. figured out, dude, you gotta you gotta finish your degree. Right. Um, because especially living in New York, uh, there are there are few opportunities for you. But if you go to school in New York, there there are great opportunities for you. Because all my friends that went to Juilliard, New School, Manhattan. They had great gigs, you know, and I, I could see I could see that road. Um, I didn't really want to go back to school, but I knew that, you know, I, I didn't have many options. So then I looked at this audition. I said, I'm going to go for it. And then ended up, um, you know, I, I remember being in the audition. You know, we, we had it by ourselves. Um, it was a crazy audition, man. I had to play like three octave scales on flute and clarinet in front of the whole band. It was so weird, man. There's wow. like 14 dudes sitting in a corner and it, it, here's, <laughs> here's me playing, you know, playing like rose etudes and stuff, you know, like, you know, not even touching the jazz yet. They just wanted to see if my doubles were together, but my doubles were together. So that was cool. And then we came back from lunch and they, they put the whole band together. And it was a Michael Abeni chart that had, it was like a, a double tenor feature. And this other guy went first. And I'm sitting there listening to him like, oh man, I, this guy's done. He couldn't, play, <laughs> he couldn't play chord changes. He couldn't play chord changes. When it's like, you know, when you go from like, like jazz, right? Jazz, like, like, like a standards, oh, you know, a lot of people can play on standards. Right. Not a lot of people can play like, you know, harmony that moves like par in parallel motion, qua you know, core qualities are changing every measure, stuff like that, like, like modern jazz stuff, right? Like right. whatever you want to call it. And I just like, I mean, this dude's done. This dude's done. Because that's all New York had, had prepared me for was right. playing ridiculously hard changes and making music out of it. Um, so, yeah, got the gig. Uh, I think the audition was like March, like March ish, April. I shipped off to, to boot camp in July. And uh, although the big band disappeared right after I got there, um, uh, I've, I've loved every minute um, being a part of the West Point band. It's been seven years now. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so lucky and fortunate, um, especially in a time like this, this COVID time, um, you know, back in March, you know, I knew that, um, I knew our lives were going to get a little bit more army than, you know, army band. Right. Um, but I'm okay with that. Cause I, you know, like the whole thing about being in the army band for me is my perspective of being a working musician since I was 15 right. and like, I know how good I have it and I'm not going to take it for granted. Um, and I'm, I'm really, I'm using it. I'm, I'm using the time to the best of my ability. Um, especially now in the COVID time, man, I've been, I've been shedding more than I, than I have in a real long time. Um, and, uh, it's uh sorry that was a little long winded, but no, like, no, you, like, like you like you said, it's a kind of un like a not your normal uh career progression. But yeah. uh so that's uh I, I skipped over some stuff, but you know. No, it's all right. It's it's great for people to see that because a lot of kids they come out and they're thinking like, well, uh, uh especially a lot of kids that we work with uh, with Blue Water Jazz Holiday. They're coming out of high school and they think like, well, if I don't get a if I don't get a scholarship to Berkeley, or if I don't, you know, I don't go to NEC or or, or Juilliard, then I'm finished. Right. When, but that's not necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. I mean, because there's like, you may like you said, like you had an ability to read. You were a really good reader, and so you use that, you know, and combine that with other things that you were picking up. You know, your ability to improvise over changes and stuff like this. So. It, it was just really kind of a timing thing. So, yeah, I mean, it's really important for kids to see that, the, you know, it, it's not the end of the road if, if you don't get accepted. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely not, you know. And, you know, if there's, if there's one thing that, 
that it, there's one thing that I that I that I say to my students over and over and over again is, excuse me, is any, if we find any opportunity for you to audition for something, I want you to do it, regardless if you think you can get it or not, right? right? Because that process, like there, there's there there's there's nothing like a deadline or you know a suspense to get us to do what we need to do yeah to to reach that deadline or that suspense you know and it, it just it just triggers it triggers something in, in our in our in our brains i think and and our 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 hearts for for crying out loud you know like i mean i remember like when i was getting my packet ready for for the west point band gig I was not going to lose that that gig unless somebody was just came in and was just blowing circles around me, you know. So I took it seriously. I've got a I've got a student that's getting ready for another army band um, audition. He, his packet was due like a couple of weeks ago, and I, I just told him the whole time, look, you know, if like, and, and we've been working on sound. Like sound is everything for me. Yeah, everything. It, that is that is priority number one. You can play all the stuff in the world. You can play, you can shred this, shred that. Um, you can read this, read that. But if you don't have a beautiful sound, it, at least where I'm standing, that's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm on to the next guy. So we work on sound and then the preparation, like it, it, you, you can see it. You, on the other side of that, being like on an audition panel, you can tell if somebody took, like really took it seriously. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that I, that I think is important, um, you know, and just, you know, for young people, just to keep open minds, man, keep, you know, like, and, and also to have, hopefully, ho and I'm sure you are, I'm, I'm sure they're lucky to have you in their lives, but like, you know, this, this, mu this life in music, this jazz life, that's a tough life, man. It's a tough life and it is hard to do it. Yeah. It's hard to do it. You know, you ask Joel how hard yeah, it is. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we, like yeah, we, we talked about that in private a lot. Yeah. You know, like, like it's, you know, man, I, I remember being in college, like, again, like I was saying, like I wasn't really dealing with stuff. Right. I didn't know anything. I was just, whatever i was i was pretty good at the saxophone i remember adam who, who was our combo coach too so i had private lessons with adam and he was my combo coach and i remember we finished we finished the tune or whatever and he's like sitting there like this <laughs> right and he 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 stands up he's like look you guys are going to be playing music in new york with me you're, we're going to like, if like, you got to take this seriously. This is not like, this is, you know, this is not for fun. I mean, yeah, music is for fun, but like, you know, we're in school to play music to, to, to continue on this path, but it, I'll never forget. I'll never forget that day. You know, like, you know, it's like, you know, and if, if you don't have people in your lives that are going to like be straight with you, mm -hmm. It's just, it's going to delay stuff, man, because, you know, and, and like we have these people in our lives, right? We have very talented people um, that seem to get away with anything, right? And whether, whether or not, we're, whether we're, you know, we're, we or they are afraid to have those difficult conversations with these people, right. um, that's a whole nother thing, right? But like eventually... What what's the like the 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 phrase the bill the bill always gets paid yeah so that that sort of thing will only get you so far and I'm speaking from like experience I have paid that bill several times yeah you know in in my in my life like I I I I I learned a lot of lessons and did a lot of growing um, as a human really right from when Katrina happened because up until Katrina happening, I thought, I thought, I thought I knew what was happening right. and like that. Nope. You don't know anything. You don't know anything. And look at where we are right now. March, what March 14th, boom, no gigs, no nothing. You can't play for anybody. You can't do anything. You can't leave your house. Like, so, 
you know, the, these experiences are, you know, if, if, if we channel them in the right way, can be, can be really, can be really um, productive and can be uh, really positive. Right. I think, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You were saying that the, you had a, you had a pretty good grasp on reading early on. Uh, was there, was there somebody that worked with you with that or was it just like, okay, you could just see like, you just saw the note values. Man, yeah, I, I, I really, you know, and I don't, you know, her name was Linda Whitehead. Okay. All right. Her name was Linda Whitehead. She ran the, um, she essentially what she was the head of the public school music program in the public schools. Right. So we had a fifth and sixth grade program, a seventh and eighth grade program, and a high school program. So pretty, pretty happening for like a high school, right? Or like, a, or a small town, right? A graduating class of like, I don't know, 350 or so. Um, but I, you know, and, and this is, this is something that like, I struggle with as a teacher. Um, because, because so much of music really came super easy to me. I have a hard time teaching like the like the basics, right. like reading music to like a, a fourth grader that doesn't know how to read music. I'm probably not your guy. I mean, I can get I, I can get you there. I can get you there. Um, but I mean, you know, I, I like for 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 me, you know, I I like I like to think of more. Um, I don't know not abstracts, not, not, not the right word, but like, I, I'm, I'm a real visual person, right? right? I'm not, I'm not a scholar. I'm not, I don't, you know, I have books, but I don't work out of books. If I pull a book out, it's really just a sight read. If maybe I have a gig, I don't, there are no gigs anymore, but you know, for, for, for every, you know, maybe a handful of times I'd get a call if, you know, if the guys at Birdland got far enough down the sub list, um, and I, I'd, I'd say, yeah, man, I'll, I'll come down. I'll, you know, cause I, I miss all my, those are all my dudes, man. I miss, I miss my, I miss, I miss my brothers and sisters in New York so much, you know? So like, I'll pull out a book just to, just to, fi- just to remember what it's like to read music. Cause yeah. man, it goes fast if you don't read music any, anymore. Um, but, um, you know, I, so yeah, as far, it, as far as like, I mean, I know when when I was in college, I definitely got got you know really into it, you know, with with the classical repertoire. Because for a while, I was I was you know I was doing both. I gave a classical saxophone recital and everything, you know, whatever that means. Um, but uh, but I was you know I was studying the I was studying the literature. But I, I think I just I think I just got it, you know. Like I think everybody's brain, you know, we everybody gets something that's a little bit different. Right. So, you know, I, I think I'm my brain is just able to like do the do the calculations like on the right. page. Right. Kind of see the big picture. Um, you know, I think that's why I'm a really good sight reader. Um, okay. You know, I can, you know, because, you know, it, I, I think sight reading um, confidence go, go, it goes a long way, you know, with sight reading um, and, you know, just, you know, even pretending like like you know the way it's supposed to be played because a lot a lot of those big band gigs in the city they are they are sight reading you know you're playing to a pack house in Birdland with you know all the cats man Jason Marshall's over here playing baritone I got Bob Bobby Priscelli like when when I would play in Arturo's band I got to play for a few years in Arturo's band Sunday nights at Birdland is incredible right Mark, you know? Mark and there's Rose. Yeah, man, you know, yeah, yeah, Mark, I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, gosh, man, it's like, and like, there's just, there's just, there's a buzz, man, there, there's a, there is a buzz that you just kind of like tap into and you can read anything, you can read anything, but wow. man, the, the minute, the minute you get a little timid, it's like everybody can feel your timidness, <laughs> and you're, right. you're just like, all right, I'm just gonna, yeah, this is, this is gonna go. But um, so, so you go across the page. Are you thinking that, like, obviously you want to focus on everything? Are you looking at, say, you have like a long sixteenth passage with all kinds of accidentals in there? Are you yeah. just mainly focusing on the rhythm, 
are you trying to nail every accident on there? You know, they're flying uh, by. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I look for like contour, you know, I look for the contour of the lines. Um, you know, I, I try to, you know, look for downbeats, you know, like, you know, the things, especially like, like in a, in a high pressure situation, if it's a recording session, it's a little different, right? You'll right. have a little bit of time, obviously, to shed the stuff out. Um, but, you know, in, in, a, in a sight reading, high pressure, low pressure, because nobody really cares, um, you know, like you, like you find you find targets, man, you know, you find targets. It's like it, it's it, it's almost like this uh, this analogy I've been working. Uh, this great saxophone player, Sean Noel. Um, we we had a we we talked about this stuff where you know we we it, it, I, I love the analogy where like playing a great line is like being a gymnast, right? You start off here, you start your line off, you do your little twirls and your somersaults and your little whatevers, right? And but do you stick the landing? Or do you fall? You know what I mean? Right, right. Did, did you kill that resolution? Did, did it make sense? Or is it just a bunch of like randomness? Because right. essentially, you can start playing something, right? And when you get to the to the dominant chord, you can play whatever you want on a dominant chord. It's like, but, but where are you going? Right? right? So I think sight reading can kind of be similar to, to that, you know, especially when, when like, like you said, like, like a, a lot of notes come up, there are a lot of accidentals. I mean, grab what you can, but like also know, you know, unless you're a lead alto player and then that, then you got to be the guy, right? And then, then that's a whole, that's a whole nother thing. But like, if you're, you're playing one of the inside parts, you know, you can kind of hide, but like, but not in a bad, not in a bad way. You know, it's not like you're bailing out. You're just holding the horn in your mouth and like. Right. Just don't stick it. out. Those yeah. horns are kind of dense anyway. So if you see. Yeah. It, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, yeah. So for me, that, that that's kind of what, I, that's what kind of what I go, I, I kind of look at. Or like, you know, also like, look, man, if there's a trumpet solo and the sax solo hasn't happened. I don't think it's bad to kind of look ahead and kind of see what see what's happening, right? I don't think it's too disrespectful to to your boy back there, you know, if if you kind of want to see what's going on and then like just just scan it. Scan it. Oh, that's just a chromatic scale. Oh, that's just that's just G G sharp major or, you know, G flat major. You know, that's all it is. That's kind of how I, how I think about these things like I try to I try to distill the information down into like the least common denominator for me. Right. Um, just that, that's how my, that's how my head works. Um, and you know, I think one of the challenges about, mm -hmm. about teaching jazz, um, in particular is everybody's brain works differently. Everybody processes information differently. Um, so all I'm trying to do is just offer just a, a different way of thinking about stuff, right? right? Instead of like, oh, it has to be this because David Baker told me so. And oh no. Jamie Abersole says that the D Dorian scale is what you use on a D minor seven. I'm not, I'm not that guy. I mean, yeah, it works. It's all those things work, but you know, I, I, I was, I was, uh, it, it can hardly be my thing, but like I, I was messing around with my cadets one day. I'm like, dude, you're, it's just your palette, man. How many colors do you have on your palette? Right. right? This thing that you're painting, you know, you know, like, oh, I got my triad pair thing here. And, oh, man, here's my, my Sam Dillon diminished thing that he showed me the other day. And, oh, man, here's some bird. You know, it's like, how many, how many colors do we have on our palette? You know, so that's – and that's kind of how I think about – I think about this just – the vocabulary is just information, really. Right. Um, we're all using the same – we're all using the same notes – um, you know, there are only so many different ways you can kind of play these things. Um, I'm interested in the, like the, uh, the, and I, I, I don't know if we'll get a, get, get time to talk about it, but like, you know, one of the things that, that, that I spend a little bit time doing is like, how many different ways can I approach like one thing? Right. Um, you know, because Look, every you know everybody, everybody who's everybody can play, right? You know we we can all rip we can we can all rip diatonic 
seventh chords the way that the train did right so but are people you know can everybody go you know, are we changing direction um are we are we spending time dealing with um like uh departure points like with the beats beat one beat two beat three beat four right those are the four strong beats and of one and of two and of three and of four those are the four upbeats so there are eight possible departure points from any sort of any sort of musical information you you want to have and i don't think and maybe it, yeah it's a little tedious it takes some time like um here can i can i play a little bit and you kind of describe yeah, what i'm talking about absolutely um so i got um what what have i got i've got drum genius here you hear that okay yeah that's fine All right, so um, so for instance, um, all right, so anybody, I, I you know, you you've been hearing me for you know a little while. You know, triad pairs are is like a like a big thing for me, right? So, yeah. um, so I'll, uh, like just a basic uh, G major and F major. Um, <laughs> Um, that'll be the that'll be the little thing, and I'll I'll kind of demonstrate what what I'm talking about about about, about those departure points, right? So that was beat one and then the end of one. So here's two and the end of one. One, two, three, one. Right? You, you see what I'm saying? Like it, yeah. it's, I mean, or, or even like, even, um, and, and you can, you can do that. You, you can do this stuff with, so, right. So, so I have those, I, I think about those eight different departure points, right? Um, and this can apply to, like that was a, you call that what, like a triad pairing pattern, right? Or, or it'd be version, I don't know, because you know, if, if you really want to get into it, you've got, right, where everything's going up. Like I, I spend time thinking about directions, right? Directions of shape. What's the direction of the shape? What's the direction of the harmony? Um, cause you can get into really interesting stuff. I've had some late night conversations with Sam about this stuff. Um, where like, say you take, um, major triads and whole steps, right? Right. So that's root position, just major triads going up on whole steps. Now, uh, it's not interesting, but one thing about that, the inversion stays the same. When 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 your when your when your shape when your harmony is ascending. So if I go to second inversion, the the inversion stays the same as I go up in the harmony. All right, and vice. So we have we have the the. The shape is go. The shape is ascending, and the harmony is ascending, right? So, I I like to work uh, from the bottom of the horn all the way to the top, right? So I would start start on low B flat, and I would go up, you know, into the altissimo, wherever I'm I'm comfortable, you know, navigating these things. Right. But then I got to come down. But the shape is still going to go up. <laughs> Right, so the shape is still going up, but the but but the harmony is coming down. Then I would go up down, right? Uh, um, yeah. Right, now all the way, yeah. all the way, all the way. 
right all that stuff then you, and then from there you also have down up right so there's there's you have those four different direction combinations um that that i also um deal with and if and if you want to see some of this stuff to share with people like in pdf i've you know we can we can talk about that okay. um offline but here's what i found is really cool so now I'm still sticking with with you know major steps and whole and, and whole steps major triads and whole steps my my line is going to ascend but the harmony is going to descend so what I mean by that so I'll start like in D major so instead of going D major to E major to F sharp and so forth I'm going D major C major B flat etc so the line is ascending while the harmony descends and what's cool about that for whatever reason i'm sure somebody knows why the inversions change so it's a little it's a little it's a little trickier right so I mean, when you get this stuff under your fingers, it can be like really cool as, as just like, you know, at a part, you know, if you're playing on like, just like a, like a one chord jam or whatever. Um, it's just a sound that, that I, that I, that I really kind of latched onto. I got really deep into it, like figuring out, you know, again, like I spent a good deal of, of early quarantine, maybe like most people and like, you know, I, I, I just took a lot of patterns and stuff that I work on. And I, I just, I was like, man, what is, what is this going to, what does this actually look like from point A to, to point double Z, you know, right. at the end through all the different inversions, through all those different departure points. And it's like dozens and dozens of pages of, of like this stuff. But, um, it's, it, it, I, it, I, I find it really good for my ear um, and then the, 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 I think that you can get some really interesting, um, colors and, and lines when you start dealing with like playing these on the, on the end of the beats, right. and it, it just, it just offsets, it offsets the harmony in a way that is just, it's, it's interesting. It's rhythmically interesting. And it's also interesting because it's not it's not the stuff that everybody plays, right? It's not the first thing you're taught, and that's where you stop. Wow. Um, so, um, and like, you know, I, I like I like using I I like you, you you can use like you can just like like pick an interval like a four. All right, so four. So same idea, right? Two. I want to. Right, so that's chromatics. How about whole steps? going but like so that that that's something that i do right so that, that is there's no set rhythm that i'm that i'm that i'm that i'm working with right but right. i'm i'm sticking with a with a direction concept <laughs> which is the the shape is going up but right. then i'm going to come down <laughs> Right, but I'm 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 just like playing around with with the with the with the upbeats is interesting to me. Right, because 
when you start going on on those on those upbeats, it's like it, you're you're creating tension, right? You're creating like just just. I mean, it's not it, it's not the greatest solo that that you ever heard, right? But I think as far as practice, right? And I'm a I'm a big believer in like practice. Your practice is different from performance, right? right. So it's it's another thing that I, I really like to stress with with my with my students is like, look, when you're practicing, you you wear a different hat. You have to wear a different hat because you know the when you're practicing, that's when you're thinking about this stuff that you're trying to work out. You're, 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 you're coming up with a task and, and a lot of, and another thing that I'm, that I'm trying to do with my practice is like, is killing as many birds with that one stone that I have, because maybe we don't have a lot of time to practice. Right. So, you know, coming up with lists, I think is huge. What do you want to work on? What are, what are your shortcomings? What do you need to work on? Yeah. Right. Because a lot of the lot of the stuff that, that, that a student might might write down, the, the things that they're really good at are at the top. Right. So I'll say, hey, do me a favor. Rewrite that list starting from the bottom and you put that stuff to the top because the stuff that we're really good at, we don't need to spend time on that, man. Right. Right. We don't we we don't need to spend time on that. What we need to spend time on is like, you know, the bridge to that one tune or the, the four, you know, like. We have to deal with the four measures of the two, five, and E major on I Love You so that when we play I Love You at a jam session and everybody can play on, you know, what, all 28 measures of, of the tune that's in, that, that, that's in F, but you can't, you can't handle, you, you can't deal with the, with the, when it goes to E major, maybe you want to spend a, a couple practice sessions just playing two fives in E major. You know what I mean? It's like, it, and like, and also isolating, you know, like th th that, that's a, that, that's a version of I isolating, right? So instead of playing through the entire tune over and over and over again and, and playing pretty eh, on, <laughs> on that two, five to E major, just pull out the two, five and E major, or uh, so is, I think it goes to A major. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm, you don't like an alto transposition. Clef oasis syndrome, man. I don't even know. Yeah. You know where I, yeah. Um, you know, so, and, um, but I'm, 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 I'm trying to, I also, I also want to be creative while I'm practicing, right? Cause you know, um, at least, at, at least, or at least when, when I'm working with a new student or, or somebody that's like, you know, approaching that sort of intermediate to advanced kind of level from where they are, I have them play everything super, super straight, super, super straight. And even I, I find that it, let me see if I can get a more, um, Right, so say, say we're, we're dealing with um, major triads, right? Uh, we'll, we'll do with four, mo four note groupings, right? If you like this. Right? Now, and a one. Right, I then 
then I can then I can vary like when I have that baseline of like everything is su super nice and, and, and even and smooth, then I can go, then I can go and I can vary, like I can vary my articulations. I can vary like my, my swing feel, all these sort of things. But I don't think if it, you know, because time is, time is, time is everything. Right. And like, you know, like, and if, if we listen to like all the incredible, you know, players, you know, that are out there, their manipulation of the time, I think is is one of it's at least for me it's one of one of the the things that that I look for um, in a player. So I think I think starting off from that having that foundation of like super even you know note value like very straight A's because if you 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 listen to like Mod you listen to Seamus you listen to Chris Potter they're essentially playing straight A's. I mean you know and then I you know and then I then I think those those moments where you know. You know, especially in the double time. The double time is like super, super straight because you can't you can't swing when you're you know when you're getting into that double time stuff. Right. Um, so um, that's that's just that's just something that I I like to kind of mess around with and, and kind of deal with. Yeah, that's totally it, man. You wanna you wanna play one? Absolutely. What do you want to yeah, play? Like trade courses or something. I don't know. Um, like out of nowhere, you mentioned that. Yeah. 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 I love it. I love it. I love it. Sure. You want to go first? You want me to go first? You go first. Uh, All right. What are we doing? Which one are we doing? We'll do out of nowhere. I love that. Time. All right. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll trade courses. All right. Thank <laughs> you. 
grandfather played my grandfather played so I was let me see so I'm in high school I'm playing a I was lucky enough to have a Yamaha student you know the school had a Yamaha tenor they're great tenors but man the thing was covered in dents I remember you remember no fear did you know that you know that 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 it was like a I don't even know what they're anyway I had stickers on it man it was I was like you know I was like I didn't, know any, I, I didn't know anything about it. So I had this crappy horn. Um, I had a buddy of mine who, who I went to high school with whose parents found an SML. He was an alto player, but his parents found an SML tenor at a, you know, a yard sale or anything. They bought it for him. He let me play that because, you know, you kind of reach a point and teachers are like, man, you need a horn, man. You're like, you, you're like, you know, so um, I played on that for a while. And then I must have been, I think it was 15 or 16. And my grandmother, man, living in California, my grandfather had died, you know, a few years earlier. Um, the horn, you know, the horn was there. And she mailed it across country in a big cardboard box filled with all those peanuts. And I, I pulled all the peanuts out. And there's one of those, um, those old pleather gig bags with a zipper up the back. Um, and inside was this gorgeous Mark six, man. Like I, you know, I don't even, you know, I don't even know. I, I I'm, I'm just, I'm so lucky, man. The, the horn, uh, the, the horn has lost a lot, a lot more lacquer, um, being in my hands and in the circles that I've been known to, to, uh, to circle. Uh, but, uh, so, it's, so, um, so this is the horn you've been playing on pretty much your whole career. Like you've had some other horns with the army and stuff. Right now. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, this, this has been my, my horn. Um, it was the only horn I had. And then um, I was in New York. So this is about, I want to say 2009, maybe 2010. Um, I got a call from my old band leader. I'm shedding. Right. And he's like, Hey, Jeff, it's Raj. I'm like, oh, hey, what's going on, Raj? It's like, hey, man, I got a tenor. I was like, oh, sweet, man, because he's an alto player. Yeah, I got this tenor, man. It's a, it's a Martin. I'm like, oh, sweet, man. Those are great horns. And he tells me the story about this family that their, the grandfather had just died, but the grandfather had inherited his best friend's music instrument collection. He said this garage was just filled with instruments. Oh, my God. And so he's like, yeah, man, a bunch of the guys have been going over and getting horns. 
And it's like, yeah, they, they had a con. I was like, oh man, you should have gotten the con. And this little light goes, ding. I was like, hey Raj, let me get that lady's number from you. <laughs> so I get off with Roger, I call the lady up, I'm like, hi ma'am, you know, my name's blah, blah, blah. I, I grew up in Falmouth. Um, I, I, I know a bunch of my, my old buddies have been coming by to, to, to buy some of the instruments off you. There's an instrument that I, if, if you, I'm gonna be on the Cape next week or whatever, would you mind putting this horn off to the side for me? She said, yeah, no problem. The ladies, they're not trying to make money, they're just trying to get their garage back. Right. So I go, I check it out. It's in the original case. You open it up. It's got that smell. You know that smell. It's got the purple felt on the inside. And it's this unplayable con. Uh, whatever. I don't know anything about it. But she's going to sell it to me for $50. So what? I'm like, all right, we got a deal. We got a deal. Um, because... I was I, I was getting ready to go on a on a like a, a tour of Cyprus um, with this credible bass player Alexi David um, and his group uh, with Phil Stewart on drums, um, Grant Stewart's brother, um, and I didn't really you know I, I was just reaching a point where like traveling with my with my six was like really kind of bringing on anxiety that like. Right. You know, it's, and I, I'd already had some bad things, man. I remember getting off one plane. Um, they made me check it. And like the, 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 the horn it was, it was like, like right here was like this, man. Like I literally came off the airplane, went to a recording session at Josh Roseman's um, studio in Brooklyn. And my horn is like, flat now, unplayable, un, like un, unplayable. I, I just, it was just like one of those things, like, you don't you don't understand how these things happen but so i got the con i had the con completely overhauled um and man that was my main horn for like three or four years i almost sold the selmer like two or three times wow. i was just like it just because you know the the vibe the corn the, the vibe on the cons man is just like it, it's just like the the tone is like you you just look at it and the, the yeah. you know it's like then you then you actually play it. So you know there's there are a lot of things that I, I really enjoyed about it. Um, sound wise, again we talked. You know, like sound is. I remember Joel. I remember I remember doing a gig with Jade's band and Joel was playing. I was on the con and Joel like gave me. He's like, man, you don't sound like all the other tenor players in this city. I was like, oh man, Joel, that's like Jesus Christ. Like like you know, be, 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 like you you get a different vibe, man. You, you get a yeah. different vibe you, you get a different sound it's hard as hell to play um because you can't cheat you know you can't yeah. cheat it's like everything's like spread out man you gotta your, your hands i remember i remember jason marshall you know cracking jokes at me like on on after one so i was like man your fingers are like what's going on he's like brown like what am i like I'm, I'm just trying to i'm just trying to deal with with this horn um you know but um uh, so I kind of went back and forth a little bit, um, but you know, like I'm, but ultimately I'm really glad that I never sold this, you know, cause I was like, man, I can sell this, I can sell this Mark six and get enough money for another con and probably maybe two other instruments, you yeah. know, like I really wanted to get a baritone, maybe a bass clarinet. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, like I'm, I'm lucky to have amazing people in my life, like my amazing wife, who's like, look, man, if you want something like how much money are you making on these weddings? You know, like, oh yeah, I guess so. Like you start doing the math, you're like, oh yeah, I just have to like save like a summer's worth of wedding gigs and boom, there's a baritone, you know, right. like little, you know, little things like that. Um, so yeah, the, the horn and, and, and I've never, you know, and, and I'm lucky, man, the army, I've, I've got some, I've got, I've got two beautiful Mark sixes that I play with in the army. So I don't have to play, I don't have to play, you know, this, um, you know, cause we do a lot of stuff outside in really cold weather. Um, um, but, um, and Those then, are the early one too, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. The tenor is, it, the, the tenor is a 58. So this is a 57,000. This is a 57,000. The work tenor is a 58,000. Um, but I think just because it's been in the army for so long and all the miles, like, you'd think that they they'd have similar sounds, but they have like completely different sounds. That horn is super bright, 
super edgy, which helps with all the pop that I, you know, that I play um, at work. Um, and then, you know, the real secret is my, uh, my John, you know, like we've talked, you know, we, 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 we've oh, talked yeah. about the, the JT, right. yeah. the, the JT, I found the, these John Thomas mouthpieces are just so versatile, man. You know, I can, I, you know, like if, if, if you push on those links, man, you know, like the sound, you, you can lose the sound. It just spreads. Right. Um, but you also, you know, it's hard to find a hard rubber that can push and be edgy, but also be like warm and round, like you want to have for, you know, for jazz or whatever. And I, I love these, these JTs, man, I've got like six or seven, man, they're all a little bit different, but you know, yeah. they, they all, they, they have this, they have this flexibility that, that, that I love about them. And that's, that's another big thing for me, just saxophone wise and sound, like, like dealing with, with long tones and, and tone exercise to be str strong and flexible to not worry about gear to right. like, Oh, I got to play a classical gig. I got to pull out my C star. Oh, oh man, I got to play a pop gig. So I got to get my whatever with a huge baffle or, Oh, I got to play this, you know, like do that here. Right. You know what I mean? Like, 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 and, and like, and 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 it's and, and it helps me when I it also all that strength training work that I do um, helps me when I pick up baritone like for the first time in months you know right. we're doing a recording session at work you know I literally just put the read on I got a, I, I got a setup that I know works um, but I'm 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 strong enough here that I, I, you know I don't I don't really struggle with it man you know. Um, the only horn that maybe I'd wanted, I'd spend some time on before I had to do anything was soprano, man. But honestly, right. that's just my horn is so squirrely, man. That like, if I don't, if I don't, if I don't spend a little bit of time on it, man, I'm like pitch is like. But, um, so the so the con you were talking about, that's the silver one I've seen you with. Yeah, you. yeah, yep. Yeah, that that thing just looks cool. It's got it looks. It's like a beautiful horn, man. Well, it's it's lost. I, there's I, I don't know how much silver is left on it. It looks like the color of my sweatshirt. It's like this purple black, uh, beautiful patina. Um, but man, it's it's man, it's 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 a sweet horn, man. And like you know, there are guys out like you know Lucas Pino. We, yeah. we've got like the same horn you know and like lucas is lucas is dealing with that thing like so well man it's like he's he's so inspiring you know to vaughn's another guy that's on you know that's tucker Antel too. you know yeah tucker man you know like you can like i think i think a lot of people get caught up in like and just like like how different it feels like how this feels but like you just have to deal with it. You just have to put some time on the horn. And I tell you, man, my technique got so much better um, on, on figuring out how to play that, that fingerboard um, because it's just like, it's like you don't have to think about it on these modern horns, right? Everything is so nice and it's everything here. But like even little things like that thing doesn't have an articulated G sharp. So like, you know, there are literally in intervals that you can't play. You can't play a low C sharp to a high G sharp. You just can't play. You got to, or you'll break your finger, you know, trying to try, try, try. So all those little tricks that you would do, um, or like the distance between the B key and the B and the bis key is like this. Yeah, yeah, man. Your finger gets stuck. So we, we, me and my boy Ledbetter, we, you know, we soldered on one of those Oleg little things like we you know we we make little we make little things to to make it a little bit you know a little bit cooler um so every now and then like uh, you know it, it's it's nice to have that in the closet for when like i find myself getting a little bit like i don't know in a rut or whatever you know like you know i'll, I'll just i'll pull the con out just for a a, a breath of fresh air man you know because the horn just the horn behaves completely different um, than the Selmer, but then on the other side, um, a, a, a great but incredible saxophonist that I served with, who I, I saw here earlier, I don't know if he's still there, Wayne Tice. He he commented to me that he thinks all the time I spent on the con has enhanced my Selmer playing, and I didn't really think about it. But when when he said that to me, because like the con, you you like you have to voice every single note, right? Like you can't. 
if if you know because it, it's just the nature of those instruments you you're like you're you're playing so much from here like all across that instrument that when you start playing that way on on the selmer man it's 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 just a, it's a different thing man it's a, it's a, it's a different thing you know and it's like i think i think uh thinking about sound in different ways you know is 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 huge man you know that's you know that's that's why we know transcribing is is so huge man yeah i, I wanted to make sure that i we talked about transcribing just and all i wanted to say is anybody here that's listening or that's going to listen just try to transcribe anything every day it you know no matter if it's for 10 minutes or an hour or two hours you know it's just like there's nothing, there's nothing like it, man. You know, like, and you know, and these things, man, you know, quarantine's been, quarantine's been bad. COVID's been bad to us, but man, COVID has, has been very good to us jazz saxophonists, man. Cause every day Sam's putting out a thing or every couple of months, Joel's putting out a new mouthpiece video and yeah. you better believe I'm transcribing that that morning. You know, it's like, you know, I've got these videos just like saved, like Mike Tucker, another great, incredible Boston oh, Snacks player, man. He yeah. just he just put a post up today. That that's my next thing that I'm that I'm gonna work on. You know, I got a Seamus solo that I'm working on. I just finished a bird solo. I've got a Coltrane thing. Like I'm I'm really personally pushing my brain. Like I've got multiple solos going on at once, you know, that I'm I'm just kind of testing my brain to see how how much information I can like hold and like without losing it. It's, it's been interesting, man. It's, it, it's, uh, you know, you, you, but I mean, it's, you know, cause you mean you, you want to, you want to have a good sound. You, you learn how to sound like Sonny Rollins. You figure out how to sound like train during that Atlantic time period, man, right. that dude was pushing some air. Man, you know, like, yeah, that period of train, you know, like, period. You know, you get like it's like, man, it's like I'm 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 trying to I'm trying to get in I'm trying to get that vibe and I'm just like this dude is pushing some air man yeah, it's like through oh, a link too through auto oh link. yeah through a link man through like it's you know but then like you go and, and and you try to get that like or maybe you get into like that prestige vibe right where it's it's almost like it's like the same air but it's it's like way prettier you know what I mean it's like yeah. There's like, there's this, like, I mean, it's all pretty, it's all beautiful, but like, oh my God. Or, you know, it's just like, you know, I, I'm just, I'm convinced that, you know, with, with, with the right amount, with the right amount of attention to like connecting your ear to your embouchure and your air, right? It's like those, those, those three components, man, you don't need to get that Florida link with, you know, that ligature and, and this read on that saxophone. I don't, I don't, maybe it helps, you know, to a certain extent, probably. Um, but, you know, I really think like, you know, I mean, look, look, we don't, look, look at Bird, man. Bird played on a different horn, different mouthpiece, different everything, every single time, every single recording, and he sounds like Bird. Yeah. It, it just does, man. You know, so it's, you know, like I, I was kind of joking with Joel. I, I want to, I want Joel to do a uh, a mouthpiece test on a Yamaha 4C. <laughs> right. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to see how bad he sounds on that. You know, it's like these guys, these guys are just, these guys are just so incredible, man. These guys are just, you know, they're they're just so incredible, and you know, it's um, it's it's a it's a crazy time to to be you know, alive right now. And, and we're all kind of going through this, this same experience, but man, there is, there is, I mean, if you want to, there's a lot of stuff out there, man, there, there's a lot of stuff out there. And, you know, and if, and I think if you're smart about it, you know, and you, 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 
you organize this stuff, you save, 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 and then go back and then you pull it up, man. You can, man, you can, we are all, man, you better, you, well, man, I, <laughs> I bet that gig you had was something, man, like Steve said, because all, all I keep thinking about is the minute any of us can get out there and play when all this is done, it's, it's like, we're, you know, the world's going to just catch on fire, man. Everybody, yeah. you know, because we're just like, that that's going to be something, man. That's going to be something, you know, and I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm really hoping that New York isn't, 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 you know, hurt too bad by this whole thing. Cause you know, it wasn't that long ago that I was there and I, you know, my situation would be much different, you know, but you know, the music's going to live on. We know that, um, you know, and man. Yeah. I, I know it's a completely different place than when I was last there. Like I, that was how, Joel and I met, and how Sam and a lot of different guys, like I hung out with Seamus, like I went to Vincent Herring's apartment or a uh, place over in Brooklyn and like got to, got to do a session with him. But like I was literally going to New York for a vacation just to go up there and get kicked around by some of the Yes, big indeed. Bosses. You know what I mean? Like that's it, it. It was absolutely incredible. I was talking to Joel yesterday, just like, you know, because the Jazz Standard just closed and, you know, I, I was just kind of throwing out New York names for him. We were talking about Spike and, and Smalls and like what that you know means to the to the jazz community. You know what I mean? Because it's a place that so many cats like. If you go to Smalls, you just never know. Like you know, you walk no. in, you never know who you're gonna run into. It's the epicenter. Yeah. It's the it's the epicenter. It's I can't tell you how many gigs I got just showing up. Right. Just just going and hanging, yeah. not even playing. It's like there, there, there's a scene. There, there are guys like guys with you know because, you know that 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 that's a part of the equation that you know that that should be talked about more. I think with young people, you know, like, and and I've had conversations with Sam too about like the the younger generation right now and where their heads are at, right. you know. And I think it's it's probably lumped into just young people in general, unfortunately, right now, the sense of entitlement, the sense of like, you know, getting, getting somewhere down there without like taking time to like, think about what the process is, you know? Um, but like smalls, like it, it's the hang. And if, and if you're not me, if you're not making the hang, then cats know that you're not really serious or, you know, because it, it, it means so much to everybody, man. It means so much to the guys playing. It means so much to the guys that are running the club. It means so much to the guys that are there because you're catching up. Hey, man, what's going on? How you doing? Man, I haven't seen you in forever. And I swear to you, every single time I would do it, and it wasn't that often, unfortunately, but, you know, I'm, I'm on my own path and I was on my own path. But you better believe it that my phone would ring the very next day. It, it's it, it it was amazing and like you know but you know not not that that's what it what it what the goal is but you know you are trying to work you are trying to trying to be connected but i mean right now i think you know what what spike has been able to do um you know with the live streams um i i, I read a post that he they have some sort of great arrangement with their landlord locked in so that like they're not going to be evicted i mean i mean it's huge man it's it's um you know and they you know they they've been that that's been the place man you know you know pre 9 11 you know that 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 was the place you know there's a lot of the other places you know closed down yeah. um but you know, it's th this, this, you know, it's, yeah, I mean. It, it and just for the cats that aren't familiar with the New York scene, you can walk into small any night. Not only will you see some of the top tier jazz musicians, you, you'll see athletes, you'll see actors, you see celebrities, you just never know who you run into. In there. It's the epicenter, man. It, it's, it's the place. It's the place. It's the late night hang. Um, and it's, you know, and, and it's, a, it's really, a, you know, it's a tribute to, to, you know, what Spike and Mitch have done over the years, just, just creating, just creating the, um, you know, the, 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 the environment, man, the, it, it's a community, man. It, it's a community there. It, it really is, man. You know, it's, it's, um, I miss it. I miss those guys. I miss, I miss everything. I miss the, I miss that whole, 
you know, because Fat Cat was my home for for many many years. Um, I book I booked the club for about three years. That was something. That's a whole <laughs> nother conversation. Um, but um, you know, it's it's you know, you're around that much music, man. You know, because we'd have three, four s- shows a night. Yeah. There was an early set. There was a main set. And then there's the late the late night jam session, man. Right. You know. And God, man, I, I remember, I remember, I, I remember seeing all, I remember, I remember seeing Tavon coming in every, every, every you know, every, so many of those jam sessions when he was getting his shit together and look at him now, Oops, sorry, you know, look at him now. Like, it, it's like, I, 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 you know, there's just like, when you're there, you don't, you don't really see it or it, it's weird, man. It, it's, I don't know, man. It's it's just yeah there's 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 no other place like it man and the majority of 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 these players man are just they're great people man they're they're great people man you know they're supportive like you know you talk like Joel for instance yeah. Joel Joel is like I mean that guy you know I, he, nobody can say enough good things about about our guy our guy Joel you know and a lot of these guys are just so generous with you know, their time, their, their knowledge, their, their inform, you know, the information. That's one thing that I'm, that I'm getting a lot of with, with this COVID stuff, man. There, there's a lot of generosity out there. Right. And, you know, like cats, like Chad, you see Chad LB, the stuff, like, like I find myself texting Chad. I was like, man, you're very generous, Chad, with, with, with all this stuff that you're putting out, man. I think it's a beautiful thing, man. You know, um, Sam too. Um, ben Wendell, man, is putting some really nice stuff out there. Um, you know, you, I mean, you name it, man. There's just, you know, maybe there's, and yeah, there's an oversaturation of saxophone videos and everything like that. But, you know, I mean, we're saxophonists, man. I don't think that's a bad thing. Like, oh, you know, that's, no. I, I'm good with it, man. I, you know, I don't think my wife would get much out of my feed, but you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's it it these are these are crazy days, but you know, hopefully everybody's, you know, trying to make the most of it and staying positive and staying strong and Yeah, absolutely, man. Well you wanna you wanna do it a little bit before we get out of here? Uh, man, I'd love to, man. Yeah, sure. All right. What do you think? Um Um I don't know, what about to my what about to Miss Jones? Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. Whew. All right. You take the you take the two A's. I'll take the bridge. You got it, man. Yeah. yeah. All right. Try that out. Then you can. Then you can. I'll take the bridge, and you take it out from there. All right, my man. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
first time I heard you play and just you know these these sessions we're doing man it's not just about the playing we want like really good quality people on there man, on here and you, you know you definitely you, fit the bill man such a such a beautiful cat man man thank I appreciate that coming. man and you know thank you again thank you to, to everybody at, at the you know Clearwater Jazz and thank you and everybody that tuned in and everybody that's gonna hear it afterwards man it's like uh, I love this music man I love talking about it and you know, uh, hit me up to talk about anything, man. And bro, Definitely. you sound beautiful, man. This Thanks, like, man. You man. too. Look, we gotta we gotta hook up offline, man. And, you know, and yeah. just, you know, just do some chatting and just chopping it up a little bit. I feel you, man. You know how to, you know how to reach me, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna kick it back over to Steve. I think he might have some comments uh, for us before we get out of here. All right. Yeah. Yeah, no, thank you both so much. Man, that was such a great session. I really appreciate both of you spending the time and just making that so special. Uh, Jeff, it was absolutely great having you with us. Thank you, um, man. Thank you, Steve. I, uh, I think um, much of what you shared is particularly meaningful for um, all of the students that follow the uh, these sessions, uh, particularly about your time in New York and, the, and how meaningful and valuable it is to put yourself out there and uh, play, um, participate in these jam sessions, network. And there's so many students that are on that cuff of just being so intimidated about, you know, how to, how to get ready for that step of yeah. going from clinic to jam session. And, and, um, and so I, I know that they're going to find great value in your words of encouragement in that regard. And then um, I wanted to also share with you, it looks like um, Anita made a comment, another great conversation, really appreciate Jeff sharing the story of his journey. Good for young musicians to know there's more than one path to success. Thank you, Anita, for sharing that. Um, Andrew shares, thanks for this, Jeff and Jeremy. I have to take off and teach some lessons, but this was awesome. Thanks again. So I wanted to share that with both of you. Um, we like to give shout outs to the uh, band directors out there that are following along with these sessions regularly and making them part of their sort of new normal uh, curriculums uh, out there, curriculum out there. Uh, Dr. Pete Carney at the State College of Florida in Bradenton. Uh, Brandon Robertson, instructor at Florida Gulf Coast University. Steve Harris down at Seminole High School. Uh, Stephen Grindell out at Osceola County School of the Arts, just a great program out there. Largo High School, Tarpon Springs High School, J.W. Mitchell High School, so many others. Uh, thanks for following along these sessions. We hope you're finding good value in them. And there's a lot more. There's a lot more scheduled into December and into the new year. Clearwaterjazz.com education and outreach section is how you find it all. Um, all these uh, sessions are free. Uh, brought to you by the Clearwater Jazz Holiday Foundation and our sponsors and supporters uh, who believe in the mission and the tradition. And then after the live sessions, they're recorded and, you know, get archived. So please take advantage of them. And um, once again, um, Jeremy, you're the man. Thank you for being such a special part of all, all that we do. And uh, I don't know. Stay safe out there, everybody. Be well. Keep playing. Keep being creative. Keep listening. And we'll see everybody back next time. Take care, guys. All right. Thank you again. Take care.